It is only Friday, December 12th, but nonetheless, this is Ho 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 Ho, the Worldview Everlasting Christmas Special. Just for fun and flair, so let me just say to you, I want to wish you a merry but, but, but. Isn't Christmas just a pagan holiday that Christians absorb because Christian religion was just borrowed from a bunch of pagans and they're all the same anyway? I mean, there was like these really smart guys in the 1800s that said that. I wish we listened to more smart guys in the 1800s more often than just when they're wrong about Christianity. <laughs> But nonetheless, it is certainly a very profound and popular myth these days floating around. The first time I ran into this issue was when I was a young evangelical convert, and I heard on my AM radio station, The Candle, in Northern California, that there was a presentation going on on Noah's Ark, because this guy had found all this stuff from Noah's Ark he was going to show us. So I drove out into the middle of nowhere in Northern California with one friend, and wind up at a Seventh-day Adventist commune of sorts, um, read cult, <laughs> with a guy giving a presentation on all his his stuff he found from Noah's Ark, but then he wanted to sell us this book about how Christmas was the devil's own plaything, and all Christians who didn't worship on the Sabbath were, were not Christians. And it really blew me away because I wasn't prepared to deal with it, I'd never heard about it, and if you do go searching on the internet, you're more likely to find the myths than the truth. But hey, all of this is actually being taught to you today on Ask the Pastor 2.0, the Christmas special, because... <laughs> Walker writes, Is Christmas okay? I came across an article recently where the author vehemently condemned the celebration of Christmas due to the fact that many of the traditions associated with Christmas have pagan origins. He pointed to Jesus' condemnation of the traditions of men in Matthew 15. Bruh, traditions of men, bruh. As far as I can tell, the claim that many Christmas traditions originated outside the church is valid, but does that necessarily mean that we should take down our trees and avoid holly wreaths like the plague? I'm thinking this could be an issue similar to food sacrifice to idols, but would be interested to hear your thoughts on the matter. As similar as it may be to food sacrifice to idols, what it's really similar to is iconoclasm, a somewhat regularly popping up heresy which kind of eschews and hates any artistry that man would do in and around the worship of God, especially statues, leading to very empty buildings to the breaking of statues. Or it can lead to the making of icons that are flat instead of round and stuff. But hey, first thing right off the bat, whenever somebody quotes Matthew 15 and the traditions of men at you, I want you to start listening very, very carefully to everything else they ever say anywhere else, because chances are they are chock full of traditions of men which they will not give up, most especially instead of certain teachings of Jesus. Oh, say like baptismal regeneration and the local presence of Jesus' flesh and blood in their bread and wine. They run around like Chicken Little saying, traditions of men, traditions of men, meanwhile they are teaching their own traditions and reasoning philosophy as if it were God's will all the time. By the way, Jesus' words in Matthew 15 are not against tradition. This is the whole point. They're against tradition taught as if it's the word of God. See, there's a difference between these two things. You can't get away from tradition. You must have something that you do other than just sit there and mimic the very words of the Bible constantly 24 hours a day all the time. Can't be done. Tradition happens. There's nothing wrong with it. What's wrong with it is saying that it saves, saying that it makes for the righteousness of God. According to the Lutheran Confessions, by the way, traditions are very salutary and should be sought after and clung to for the sake of tranquility in the churches, peace amongst the brotherhood. But don't tell that to the Missouri Synod. <laughs> but next time someone says traditions of men to you, just step back and listen and look around and see what they're actually teaching. Because guess what? The idea that Christmas is based on pagan holidays is a tradition of men. Mm. And it's a bad one. <laughs> Now, like I said, I too ran into this early on and was really flustered with it. And I eventually just came to the theological conclusion that when you hold your dates of worship does not matter, so long as the Word of God is actually present. That the traditions of men, so long as they lift up the Word of God, is what's important. This is a good handy-dandy rule for dealing with traditions, provided you also keep in the context that love for your neighbor means working for peace and unity in the churches. And so, say, if Christmas trees do come from pagan traditions, well, so do pancakes, right? I mean, if you don't do anything the pagans do ever, then we can't do anything. Ever. Now, personally, even though I love Christmas trees, I do think it's kind of strange that to celebrate the incarnation of the Son of God, we kill a tree. But they do smell good in the house, and they're very pretty with lights on. And they can be used to teach about the Christ. Namely that, on a dead tree, this baby died for you, and so forth. But let's get back to this whole myth about December the 25th thing, because it's kind of interesting. The long and short of it begins with recognizing that not all Christians celebrate Christmas on December the 25th. The entire eastern half of the Christian world celebrates on January 7th. From the early church on, even though there were two different dates being celebrated, 
did, the idea that this was a pagan observance existed nowhere. It wasn't until the 12th century in a marginal note in the writings of a Syriac biblical commentator, Dionysius Bar Salabi, that someone suggested that Christmas was shifted from the 6th of January to December 25th so that it fell on the same date as Sol and blah blah unconquerable sun pagan holiday. Now what happened was this 12th century footnote got picked up on by 18th century scholars and if you know anything about 18th century scholars the one thing they wanted to do was trash Christianity as hard as far as fast as they could and in doing so with their criticism they were so eager that they didn't bother to wait for research archaeological evidence or anything to really establish their proofs. Instead they would just talk and act really smart. Kind of like Christopher Hitchens does today. <laughs> And by talking really confidently and sounding really smart and publishing lots of articles and making all sorts of claims about how mankind now had realized what an idiotic thing Christianity was to believe, they were able to sway a culture that was pretty ready to be swayed probably by that point anyway. So to support their comparative religious claims, they start claiming that Christianity is nothing but an evolution out of paganism. Blah, blah, blah. Here's the problem. The data doesn't support it. Most significantly, the first mention for the date of Christmas is around the year 2 and the earliest celebrations that are recorded are around 250, moving towards 300. Here's the deal. This is a time when Christians were not borrowing from pagan cultures. Instead, they were doing everything they could to not look like the pagans. They were still in the age of in the world, but not of it. Stay out. We're different than you. No food offered at idols will be on my table because, hey, that's a table of demons. And by the way, there are two sections in 1 Corinthians, and the second section should predominate, and that's the one where Paul does say, you know, as a general rule, don't eat the meat. He does kind of say that. Why? Ha! <laughs> it's back to love your neighbor. Huh? Yeah. Love your neighbor. Tranquility in the community. Augsburg Confession 7 in the Apology, if you read it. That's inside baseball. Don't worry about it. In the early centuries, the Christians who were in minority and being persecuted were greatly concerned with not looking like false religions. And this remained the case as late as the persecutions by the Roman Emperor Diocletian in 312. So the fact that the Christian church is celebrating Christmas on December the 25th, well over a hundred years before Constantine he makes them the official religion of the empire and begins trying to popularize Christianity, they're already doing it. Why would this be? Hey, what do you know? There's actually some textual evidence to tell us. Around 200, Tertullian of Carthage, an interesting character, but possibly the smartest man to ever live, except for maybe Matt Lorfield, he calculated that according to the Gospel of John, his calculation, Jesus died on the 14th of Nisan, which is about the equivalent of March 25th. Thus, Jesus died on March 25th, and in accord with good, pious Jewish tradition, a prophet always died on the same day he was born, and by born they meant conceived in the womb. And hence, from that time on, March 25th became the date of the Annunciation to the Virgin Mary that she was going to conceive and bear a child. And nine months later, on December the 25th, they begin to celebrate Christmas. Now, this is most certainly a tradition of men, no question about that whatsoever. And it might not really be the most established form of of logical deduction ever used. But one thing it's not is Roman paganism. And one thing it does is exposes the willingness when you're anti-Christian to base your claims on very little substantiated evidence, but to make them bold and loud and really rough sound in order to make Christians feel bad. So it's cool to find that in an early Christian treatise called On Solstices and Equinoxes, it is written, Our Lord was conceived on the 8th of the calends of April in the month of March, which is the day of the passion of our Lord and of his conception, for that is the day he was conceived in the day he suffered. While that's pretty sweet stuff to learn and something to just kind of, you know, shove up the nose of the person going, rah, 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 bad Christianity. <laughs> Isn't Christmas just a pagan holiday? Uh-uh. No, you didn't. <laughs> The real point is that getting the date that Jesus was born on correct doesn't matter. Now, I guess the guy could still say, well, oh, I guess it's Roman Catholic then, or something like that. And it's a tradition of men based on a Jewish myth, and yeah, I guess he'd be right. We only to bet dollars to donuts this guy worships only on Saturdays, which would be, again, a tradition of men, quite contrary to the biblical revelation. What does matter is getting Jesus' institution of his church correct, and that institution goes something like this. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this this is my body. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup 
is the New Testament in my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as my memorial. And then he died, and then he rose, and then he sent them into the entire world and said, Teach the pagans to hear and wash them with my name, the name of Father, Son, and Spirit, the God who is triune, who can only be received through me, for I am the way, the truth, and the life, and as the branch is to the vine, so are you to me. Humanity, I save you. Do this. These are my traditions, divinely instituted. Yes, of man, one man, Jesus Christ. What matters is getting that right, because otherwise, frankly, you have no way of getting to Jesus. Without the word and sacraments coming to you for the forgiveness of your sins, there is no Christianity. So the real godly way to think about traditions and icons and iconoclasm and all the such is to recognize that provided that the traditions we receive from the past do not obscure this holy gospel, this Jesus, who he is, what he's done for us. They are meat, right, and salutary for maintaining peace and tranquility in the churches and useful for teaching the confession which we confess. In the day that a tradition begins to obscure the gospel, that is, begins to be taught as if it were the establishment of its own righteousness, then we must reject that tradition. And guess what most people who refuse to worship on the 25th of December think? They think that by doing so, they are somehow establishing their own righteousness as an act of worship before God. Hmm. Their tradition of rejecting traditions is what justifies them, and thus it is the very thing condemned by Matthew. 15. You know, as a general rule, again, what I've found is that when people are really, really adamant about their condemning of either Lutheranism or Christianity, if you take a few moments and like really step back and listen to the way in which they're arguing, the best argument against them is usually the one they're making. It's kind of weird how it works that way. It's not a, you know, perfect solution. It doesn't always happen, but you'd be amazed how many times if you just twist the argument slightly like this, it goes right back at them and undercuts everything they're trying to say. Nowhere does the scripture condemn traditions of men. It only condemns traditions of men taught as if they're the word of God. True Christianity relishes tradition because it points us back to the teaching of the pure word of God. And so Christmas then, Christ Mass then, the 25th of December then, is a celebration of our Lord becoming incarnate in order to die for the sins of the world and of Christ coming again, not just in the future, but right now in the Holy Mass. Short shift, fancy way of saying in the Lord's Supper. Put the Mass back in Christmas. And on December 25th at 10 a.m. And if you're anywhere in the area of Philadelphia, you can come to St. John Lutheran Church on the corner of Scenic and Madison Road, or you can find your own Lutheran Church in the area that still holds Christ Mass, and you can know this for certain, that the 25th of December is a tradition of men that is neither good nor bad, so long as it reminds you that the plastic baby is in the manger, but Jesus is in the bread and wine. Uh-uh! No, you didn't.